Best of R slash Tales from Tech Support Episode 133. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. It's not the PC that's broken it's the Wi-Fi even though PC is the only thing that can't connect. User. My work laptop won't connect to my phone's Wi-Fi. Me. Okay let's try to connect other thing to the phone Wi-Fi. User. I tried to connect to my personal phone's Wi-Fi and it doesn't work either. Me. Okay try connecting other things to your corporate cell phone. User. No. Why won't you help me? Me. If the PC isn't connecting to either cell phone, the issue seems to be with your PC not the phones. Please contact IT for PC support. I don't have any access to PC support stuff. User. Okay. Thank you. Next. Mr. X needs speakers. So a bit of background. I'm a senior network engineer and acting network manager at a sizable secondary school in the UK. I've worked here for 6 years and did my apprenticeship training here as well. This tale is from back when I was an apprentice. To this day this story still sticks in my mind. I was in the technical office one day when a kid appears at the door. Our office is through the media classroom and for that reason we have a rule, and numerous signs, that during lesson time students aren't allowed to come to the office, unless the classroom door is open, since it would disturb the class in progress. There are exceptions if it's an emergency or if their teacher has emailed or called ahead of time. But in this instance we weren't expecting anyone. Because we didn't want them lingering in the ongoing lesson. I opened the door and get them to come into the office. Mr. Need Speakers. Ha. Huh. Mr. Need Speakers. I look around the office and ask the senior engineer at the time if we got an email from said teacher requesting speakers. This teacher teaches both psychology and pay so if he's taking a pay class it's not unusual that he'd book some portable speakers to use either in the sports hall or the field. But we didn't get an email. So I ask the kid where his class is. He tells me it's a room inside the school. But that room has speakers built into the room. Is this a psychology class? Yep. The speakers aren't working. Okay. He didn't get an email about this either. At this point the other engineer chimes in and says that we can't just give out speakers without knowing the problem and that we might be able to fix it. Whatever the problem is. Since I was the apprentice I was sent up to the room to see what the problem was, because the others didn't particularly want to go. So I follow the kid up to the classroom. Some information about our classrooms. Since I've taken over as senior engineer I've implemented a mixture of flat screen TVs and pro-wise screens around the school, but back then we were deep in the realm of projectors. All of the projectors had wall-mounted speakers either side of them, and everything was wired into an input panel beside it. All teachers needed to do was plug their laptops into the VGA and aux cables that ran into the panel. Each panel had two visual and two audio sockets for different input channels. So I arrived at the room and the teacher was sat next to the panel. A YouTube video is being projected onto the board but sound is coming out of his laptop. Oh. Sir. Thank you. Student's name. Do you have any spare speakers, sir? I explained to him that it might not be the speakers that are the problem. It could be the aux cable, or his laptop's aux port, or the port in the wall panel. So I go over to have a look, and I immediately see the problem. The aux cable is coming out of channel 1, and going back into channel 2. There is nothing plugged into his laptop. Just to clarify, this man had, instead of plugging the cable into his laptop, plugged the cable into both identical ports beside each other. Without a word. I take the cable out of channel 2 and plug it into his laptop, and instantly sound starts coming out of the speakers. The teacher turns bright red and all of the kids in the class start ribbing him. He's not even particularly technophobic, and he's only 2 years older than me, so there's not the excuse of age being a factor. The only explanation I can think of is that he got a bit confused and panicked. The teacher is a good mate now and we occasionally have a laugh about it all. But I'm still stunned he didn't realize that was the problem. And that his first instinct was to ask for a whole new set of speakers. Thank you. Next. Good news. You can cancel your vacation. Background. I'm a software developer slash consultant and at the time I was working on a long term project. This happened years ago. In February I got approval to take vacation time in September and I immediately started booking slash paying for everything more details below. Our scheduled goal live was first week of August, which I had taken into account. 
so my plan had me going on vacation one month after that. Unfortunately, after numerous delays Go Live gets moved to the first week of my vacation. About 5 days before I depart, at this point I'm literally counting down the hours to our departure. The project manager comes up to me and totally out of nowhere this happens. PM, good news, I just got approval for you to move your vacation. You can now be here for Go Live. Me, wait, what? Sorry, that's neither possible nor good news. PM, no, it's fine. We'll fully reimburse you for everything that you cannot get a full refund on and we'll even allow you to roll those vacation days over if you need to, which you probably will. Me. Okay, so off the top of my head you'll be covering two plane tickets to European City A, Airbnb in, European City B, Airbnb in, European City C, accommodation at a winery in, European City D, train tickets to different country, a boutique hotel in, European City E, Airbnb in, European City F, and two return flights back from, European City G. I can, however, still cancel both of my rental cars and get a full refund. PM, mouth open, you've planned and paid for all of that? Me, yes, six months ago immediately after I requested this time off. This trip required a lot of planning and coordination and the places were going a high demand slash low availability so most require advance payment. On top of that the time of year is important, so even if I could get refunds, we can't just shift things a few weeks, we'd have to wait an entire year. PM. Oh, I thought you and your wife might just be going on a cruise and you could reschedule it. Me. Haha. <laughs> no, cruises aren't my style. Whenever I go on vacation I always tell everyone that I will be completely unreachable. I thought you understood that was a statement of fact and not just me being difficult. Is there anything else or should I keep closing out defects before I go on vacation? PM. Yeah, do that. What blows my mind is how he thought cancelling my vacation just a few days before departure was good news. Did he think I was gonna respond with badass? I can keep rolling in here to deal with your bullshit instead of going on a magical vacation I spent a month planning and have been dreaming about all day long for the past few months. Great news. I know I probably could have gotten refunds on some of that stuff, but fuck that. I would have turned in my two weeks before skipping out on that trip. Thank you. Next. Custom build horror story. This isn't really generic tech support but I remembered this interaction today and I thought I'd share. So. Technically I work in retail, but we do a lot of over the phone and in person tech support for folks. It isn't 100% formal, but people in my position at this place know about common issues with custom computer builds and networking problems and other issues. A few months back I get a call from a customer who is having problems, and he says his new build isn't posting. I start having some email correspondence with him which takes forever as he takes anywhere from 5-10 hours to respond to my emails, and he didn't have time for a long phone call. I go through the general issues with him, like suit cables being plugged in and I also guide him through a CMOS jump to see if it's maybe that he didn't plug in his FPIO correctly or something. Still nothing. I ask him what parts he has and he sends me a list. I finally realized. I probably should have asked him what parts he had first. Rookie mistake on my part. He was trying to use an AMD chip with an H370 board. Not sure how he thought the two were compatible. Nor how he actually got the chip into the board at all. I ask him about the pins on his processor. He says they are pushed flat now. Shouldn't they be that way? I fass up him internally and have to go about explaining to him that his processor and motherboard aren't compatible in the slightest. As things go, the guy blows up on me, saying he didn't have any way of knowing. This is true. He didn't buy the parts at my workplace, so he didn't really have anyone guiding him through it. I suppose he didn't really do much research either, which is crazy to me because one Google search would show anyone it's an Intel board. I also deduced from what he'd said that he had his EPS cable plugged into his GPU. Hopefully it's still okay. I never found out. I arrange for him to pick up new parts and he begrudgingly agrees with me that our certified techs should build it. Really, they should have taken this issue. But they're a wee bit understaffed ATM. Oh, the tragedy. After this I never heard anything else from the guy but damn I hope he got a working computer. I see a lot of missteps with custom builds but most are minor.
like subpar cable management or RAM in the wrong slots, but this was by far the worst. Not really your generic tech support story, but I hope you'll get a kick out of it, I'm sure a lot of you have had similar interactions. Thank you, next. I demand a refund and I want my free shipping back too. Yes, you read correctly. Customer wants his free shipping refunded. Here is the backstory. I work for a company that sells a very specific aftermarket upgrade for vehicles. They are vehicle specific parts, not a standard kit or one size fits all type of deal. We are very specific in our listings, to help people get the correct fit for their vehicle. Unfortunately, sometimes when people are shopping online, their endorphins kick in, because they are spending money, and they look at so many different options, by the time they purchase, they have viewed several different products and are on information overload. This leads to people buying the wrong kit. Fast forward to 3-5 days later when their eagerly awaited item arrives, and that is where tech support comes in. If you just read the enclosed paperwork, it tells you everything you need to do to get this installed. I'd say 75% of our customers do not read the enclosed paperwork. They just call us and start complaining about everything. Blah blah blah. I call these types of people job security. Now on to my customer of the day. This happened Monday. I will refer to myself as TSG Tech Support Genius, and our idiot as SC for stupid customer. TSG, thank you for calling Random Parts Place, how may I assist you? SC, yes, I bought this kit for Mises vehicle and it doesn't fit my car. This is total bullshit. It is supposed to be plug and play and it's not. TSG, I am sorry to hear you are having issues sir. May I please have your order number so I can see what it is we are dealing with. Gives me order number. Yes sir. I can see why you are confused. This kit is not a plug and play. SE. That's fucking bullshit. Your AD says plug and play. I want a refund right now. I pull up the complete listing and email it to the customer and highlight the part where it clearly states in the ad this is not a plug and play. I offer tech support to help him get this installed. But he is not having it. SE. That is not what I ordered. This is not what my listing said. I want my money back right now. And I want my free shipping refunder too. TSG. I am sorry to hear you wish to return your item. I have approved your return. Once you ship the item back to us, I will refund your purchase price in full. However, I have no way to refund something for which you did not pay. SE. Someone paid for that shipping and I am entitled to it for all this bullshit you have put me through. Yes, we are at fault because you can't read. How's that working out for you? I would love to tell him he is stupid, but I cannot. I assured him he would get a refund of his purchase price and that was all I could do. When I ended the call he was still bitching and moaning to someone in the background about how stupid we are. Quite frankly, if he is too stupid to know what he is buying, he is too stupid to install it and we don't want him using our product anyway. Thanks for reading. I needed to vent. Thank you. Next. Hello IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Today has been one of those days. Seems like I have been getting tickets all day with users not restarting their computers before sending in tickets. Ticket. Problem with this or that. Remote in. Check up time. 12 days. 25 days. 53 days, and so on. Me, before proceeding further, please restart your computer and let me know if you have problems after the reboot. A few moments later, user, hey, it's working now. Me, great, glad it has been fixed. I feel like Roy from the IT crowd. I'm getting paid either way, I guess. Thank you, next. Revert back to my original OS. I can't work in this environment. This is from a few years ago when I was working for a contracting company. My first project was helping a company upgrade their entire very outdated environment that was fairly large. This project took about two years. Partially because they kept on changing the scope, sometimes we got notified about another group of servers that they magically forgot about. Honestly a very unorganized company. We had to make our own servers so we could scan the environment. They also were a physical shop. So we had the fun job of bringing in even more contractors to bring in VMware. IDK how much we charged them, but it probably wasn't enough. I was really 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 fresh to IT in the company I landed with. 
I only had to set up servers on VMware, but I learned so much from the project after working with so many people so that made the two years of torture very rewarding for me. The torture went to the other guys. I still feel bad for M. So two years are over and we managed to get their entire environment over. About two months later we get a call. Things in their environment were beginning to fail. So we get in touch with the main administrator at the company so we could help them resolve the issues. I can't believe what I'm about to say, but this freaking idiot apparently started deleting VMs from the environment we made and went back into putting his physical NT servers back into production. We obviously said you can't be doing this. This guy on the call basically said that he didn't understand 2012. He couldn't administer it anymore. He will be moving back to NT and we are to help him. At this point we just got off the call ASAP and we reached out to the people that hired us and kind of had to tell them what happened. That main administrator was let go. And this part I still feel bad about they basically let go of the entire team that was administering their environment. A different part of my company continued in the future to do all of the support and they didn't get a new infrastructure team. The only guy that survived the purge was the desktop help desk guy. As one of my very first projects. It a doozy XD.